Hi guys, Jonathan here with Farmer's Friend. Mike and I are gonna show you this morning how two people can easily set up one of our 14 by 100 Caterpillar tunnel kits. We're gonna be setting it up right here behind us where we've had silage tarp on this pad for almost a month. The soil is well prepared and ready for a fall crop. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm working on uh, setting up the anchor posts. I've already set the corner post and I've just run my tape measure all the way down for 100 feet. And now I'm just gonna put these anchor posts in at five foot increments. You wanna make sure that you get your anchor plate on here before you hammer it in. Because as you're pounding on these rebar, it could flatten out and it would be hard to get this over the top. So you wanna put that on first over the top and then hang on to it and then start pounding it down. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you leave about 16 to 18 inches above the ground. You've got your anchor plate here. When you're in at the right level, simply just drop the anchor plate and you're ready to go with that stake and you just work your way on down the line every five feet. So for putting the bows together, you'll find in your kit there's two different kinds of bows. The center bow section has no swaging on either end and then the other two side pieces will have a swage on one end. The swaged end is gonna go insert into the center section on both ends. You'll wanna find a nice flat surface to do this on, maybe a driveway, if you have a cement pad, um, that would be great. If, it's, if the soil's uneven, as you screw these together, when you put them up, they won't be straight, they'll be kind of snaky. Once you have the three bow sections together, you'll then take tech screws with a drill and Put one tech screw in the side of the bow. You don't want to have it in the top where the plastic is going to be resting or else it'll tear it up really bad. So put it right in the side. So once you have one line of stakes in, measure 14 feet from this corner to the, the second line on both ends. And then we run the tape measure out again, pull it nice and tight and straight, and then pound the rebar in once again every five foot down the second side. Okay, so now we have the stakes in and the bows are all assembled. The next step is to put the bows on the stakes. And we start at the far end and work our way back this way. Mike's gonna walk on the inside of the stakes, I'll walk on the outside, and we carry two at a time. It's pretty easy. So what's easiest, if one person sets their bow on the ground and then the second person puts theirs on the rebar. If you're both trying to do it at the same time, it can get really wobbly. All right, so we've got the bows up. Our next step is putting in the plastic anchoring T-posts at each end. So what you're gonna do is pace out about 10 to 12 feet. Try to get it as centered as you can. And then pound this T-post in at a pretty good angle. So the next step is to put the purling strap up and each, over each bow. So before we put the strap over the bows, you wanna feed it through the clasp on one end and make sure it holds nice and tight. And then we'll just start wrapping the strap around the bows. Start by going under, then over, and then on to the next bow. This is the second time we've assembled this tunnel and the strap was all in a pile. So we took this four inch piece of pipe and wrapped the strap around it, which makes it a whole lot easier. All right, so now that we have the strap wrapped around each one of the bows, we go ahead and insert it into the buckle on this end and snug it up a little bit. We're not gonna pull it too tight right now because now's the opportunity to go and straighten up some of the bows. And then we also need to straighten up the purling strap down the center because in the process of um, looping it around each bow, it gets a little bit snaky. All right, so we have the strap on and we pulled it tight and snug. That keeps all the bows pretty rigid, it really makes a, a big difference. But the wind has picked up and so we feel like we need to hold off on the plastic. A uh, 24 by 100 foot piece of plastic can really take off with a little bit of wind. So we're gonna hold off until tomorrow morning when it should be less windy. All right, we're back this morning and the wind has died down a lot so we are ready to do the final step of putting the plastic on. So what we do is roll it out all the way down one side, 
So on this plastic, there is an inside and an outside. The outside has more of a UV treating on it. So right down the center, they have printed, uh, and it says inside. You want that facing the bottom side, the inside of the tunnel. So we're ready to pull the plastic over the tunnel. Uh, Mike's on that end, and we're gonna pull against each other, and hopefully we can get this thing all the way over. Okay, so now that we have the plastic over the tunnel, the next step is to pull it tight from both ends and anchor it to the T-posts. So what we're gonna do is Mike's gonna pull hard on that end, I pull hard on this end. We're trying to get it absolutely as tight as possible by hand. Now that we have it relatively tight, what I'm gonna do is scrunch it all together and tie a piece of rope around it just maybe a foot or so in front of your T-post so that still, you still have room to, to pull tighter. And just put a good knot in it, tight as you can. So once we have that knot tied, the next step is anchoring it into the T-post. And there's a couple of different options of how to do this whole process of anchoring the plastic. Some people put two, two T-posts in right next to each other at the end and then put the plastic in between and kind of lash them together. That's a good option as well. Um, but today we decided just to do one T-post and tie off to it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put the rope over and tighten down the plastic. We start by tying a loop in one end of the rope and you're gonna anchor that loop on the first carabiner here. Then we skip one bow and we come over here to the third bow and hook the rope to the clasp on the third bow. Then I'm pulling a loop out between those two bows and it gets thrown over the center of the house. Okay, so now we're on the other side and before you hook it to the second bow, you wanna make sure that it's untwisted and he attaches it to the second bow. So then we just do the same thing all the way down the length of the greenhouse. So we've thrown the loop over to the last bow and you hook it onto the corner post and then go ahead and pull this string tight right behind the first bow. Pull tight. Now we're gonna go back down this side and I'm gonna attach it to the bows that I skipped and then throw it over and Mike's gonna attach on the other side to the bows that he skipped. We now have the rope completely installed and so our next step is tightening the ropes to hold the plastic on. So the rope is anchored on the first bow here and then it goes across to the second bow and it's attached at the anchor plate on the second bow on the far side. Then it comes back down to the third bow here and Mike's gonna be pulling down on the right side and lifting up on the left to tighten. Then I'm gonna skip the fourth bow and go to the fifth and pull down and up. Then Mike skips the sixth and goes to the seventh and pulls down on the right side, up on the left. And we do that same process, skipping a bow all the way down. Now we're not trying to pull it super tight, just snug. Because when we come back, we're, we're gonna be tightening up the other bows and we'll be taking more slack out then. So we've tightened all the way down this side, um, skipping every other bow. So now we've gotten to this end and we need to come back the same side, tightening up on the bows that we skipped. So now we're pulling down on the left and up on the right. And it's the same process of skipping one bow and just kind of leapfrogging your way down. This time going down this side, you'll want to pay a little more attention to how tight the plastic is getting because this will be your final tightening pass. So we're all the way back to this end on the same side that we started on. The rope is gonna be anchored finally on the other side. So what we have to do is go around this side and pull it down tight here. Pull it nice and snug, kind of calculate where, where you want it to be anchored and then just go ahead and tie a loop in it like such and then pull it down and put it over the carabiner. 
All right, so the final step is putting on what we're calling the side curtain hooks. So you'll do that by lifting up the plastic on your tunnel. And it goes on with the, the long end facing up, kind of uh, parallel to the bow like that. Loop the long end around the back side, and it kind of locks into place wherever you set it, and then the plastic will just rest on that. So there's 22 in the kit, so you would start on this side and uh, skip a bow, come down here to the third bow, put one on your third bow, and then you're just gonna continue on down, skipping every other bow. And then on the other side, you're gonna put them on the, the opposite bows, the bows that you skipped on this side. And then you can, you can adjust the height on these any way you want to, just lift them up, pull them down, they lock in. And when you wanna have the plastic all the way down, you don't have to even take these all the way off, just pivot them around to the back and the plastic can go right back down. So that is how two people can set up our Caterpillar tunnel kits. Hope you found this video helpful and feel free to give us a call if you have any questions and happy growing.